we are going to solve this by graphical method. Now, the easiest way that I found to do this is what you want to do is you're going to look at the shifting of both the input and the impulse response, and you'll see um, it shifted by a maximum of two units. So what I do is I plug in uh, numbers from zero to two, and that's how I get my graph for x of t. So let's say we do, we plug in a zero. So when we plug in a zero, this will be u of zero minus u, zero minus two minus two. Unit step. So unit step, it's a one for when t is greater than or equal to zero and zero for when t is less than zero. So because this is u of zero, it is a one minus negative two to zero. So at x zero, we have a one. So then we go ahead and we plug in a one. One minus two. In this case, u of one, it's still a one. u of negative one is still a zero. So it's still a one for x of one. Now we do two because this is a shift of two. So we go up to two and we're going to be punching in. Two minus two is zero. And now u of two gives us a one minus u of zero will give us another one. So now it's a zero. You can go ahead, plug in numbers in between. So you can do x of 0 0.5, x of 1.5. And the graph for this, so at zero, we have a one. At one, we have a one. And then at two, we have a zero. So how do we know this doesn't go like this? So you plug in a 1.5 and you'll see that is that the answer for 1.5 is also a one. So that's how you know. And then at two, it's a zero. So now we go ahead and do the same thing for H of T. We see that it shifts a maximum of two. So we plug in numbers from zero to two. So we get two times zero and this automatically just gonna make it a zero. And then also this is going to be a negative one, which is a zero. So this one will already be zero. H of one will be two times one. U of one minus U of zero plus U of one minus one minus one. So we can see that u of 1 is a 1, u of 0 is a 1, so that's a 0 here, plus 2 times u of 0 is a 1, u of negative 1 is a 0. So here we have a 2. Then we do it for 2. So notice we're just plugging all this in right here. Two minus one is a one plus two of two minus one is a one and then a zero here. So we have four, u of two is a one, u of one is a one, so it's zero here. U of one is a one u of zero is a one, so zero, so it's a zero here. And then like I said, you can do a 0 0.5 here and a 1.5 here, plug in the same concept to get your graph. So at zero, we have zero. At one, we have two. So, how do we know if this is going straight this way? When you go ahead and plug in a 0 0.5, you'll notice that the answer is a one. So it's actually a straight line this way. 
then at 1.5 you'll get an answer of 2 and it is 0. So we know that the graph is going to go look like this. So now that we have both our graphs, what we are going to do is we're going to pick the easiest one and flip it about the vertical axis and we're going to be shifting it along the axis and uh, overlap it with the impulse response and that's how we are going to uh, solve this problem using convolution by graphical method. So in our first case, we are going to just flip this so our graph is going to look like so we'll see when you flip this the 2 will go on the farthest left so it'll be at minus 2 plus t and then this leg will always be at t and we have our so this is a height of 1 that's a height of 2 and that's at 2 so as you can see here our t is less than or equal to 0 because it's less than zero and our y of t, since there's no convolution, they're not overlapping, so it's just going to be zero for the first case. So the next case, case two, what we are going to do is move this leg a little bit in between so it is convolving with the impulse response. So we are going to move the T leg in between 0 and 1 of this other graph. So we have our impulse response and then that leg will go in between. That is a height of 2. So now you'll see that the t is from 0 to 1. So our t is from 0 to 1. And then setting up the integral, we'll be going and looking at which parts are overlapping. So we'll see that for the first part, it's going to be from 0 to t, because that's the first section that's overlapping. So the first integral will be from 0 to t. Uh, the height of this is a 1, so 1 times. And then this right here. So this is tau. And because this has a height of 2, it's going to be 2 tau. d tau is this area right here. That's the only thing we have to do here. So doing this is just 2 tau, so it will be 2 tau squared over 2, which is just tau squared from 0 to t. Now we are going to plug this in, so it will be t squared minus, plugging in a 0, 0 squared, we get yt equals t squared for case 2. So now on to case 3. Now in case 3, what we are going to do is we are going to move the t-leg by another unit. So now we'll be in between here. So, we go to draw it. Here's 1, here's 2. So now since the leg was here, the t-leg, now it will be in between 1 and 2. So here's where the t is now. And when we go to do this, we'll see that the t is between 1 and 2. And how we set up the integral is we look at all the parts that are overlapping. So from 0 to 1, we see a height of 1 multiplied. So 0 to 1, it's that 2 tau d tau plus the integral now from 1 to t because that's the only part so from 1 to t and we see again a height of 1 since this rectangle is a height of 1 times and this is just a height of 2 d tau we go to solve for this 2 tau will just be 2 tau squared over 2 from 0 to 1 
plus 2 d tau will just be 2 tau from 1 to t. This is just tau squared, plug in a 1, so it will be 1 squared minus 0 squared, plus plug in a t for tau, it will be 2t minus plug in a 1 for tau, minus 2. So we have 1 minus 2 plus 2t. Two That's what we get for y of t here. Now we are going to do case 4. Now in case 4, when we move this t over one unit, it will be outside, and you'll see, you'll notice that this leg will now be in between 0 and 1. So when we go to draw it, so this leg will be out, and now the minus 2 plus t leg will be inside this portion, and this leg will be out. So now we are going to look at this leg. So minus 2 plus t, and that's in between 0 and 1. So we need to get t by itself. So what we got to do is add 2 to both sides. So now we add 2 to here, so it will be a 2. t will be by itself. Add 2 to the 1, and it will be 3. So now t is between 2 and 3 here. And then again, we look at where they overlap. So from negative 2 plus t till 1, before the slope changes, we have a height of 1 being multiplied by that 2 tau. And on top of that, we have from 1 to 2, and that's just the height of 1 multiplied by a height of 2 d tau. So here we have 2 tau, which will be 2 tau squared over 2 from minus 2 plus t till 1 plus 2, which will be 2 tau from 1 to 2. This is just tau squared. You plug in a 1, you get a 1 minus, when you plug in a minus 2 plus t, t squared minus 4t plus 4, you add this, you plug in a 2 for tau, you get minus 2 times 1. Here what we're going to do is distribute the negative, so 1 minus t squared plus 4t minus 4 plus 4 minus 2. When you go ahead and you do this, you'll get negative t squared plus 4t minus 1. The next step, case 5. Again, we are going to now look at this leg and move it in between 1 and 2 now. So if you go ahead and draw that. Now we move the leg in between that. This is our t, this is our negative 2 plus t, and now it's in between 1 and 2. So when we go to head right, it's between 1 and 2, but we need to get t by itself. So when you add the 2 here, you'll get a 3. Add the 2 here, you'll get a 4. And again, we look where they convolve, where they overlap. So from negative 2 plus t to 2, we have a height of 1 multiplied by a height of 2 d tau. Because this is... So now, this just becomes... 2 tau from minus 2 plus t to 2. You plug in 2 for tau, so you get 
2 times 2 minus, plug this into that, you get 2 minus 2 plus t. So now we have our y of t as minus 2t plus 8. Or you can also rewrite this as 2 times 4 minus t. The last case, case 6, is when this leg is outside now, since it's been in between 0 to 1 and 1 to 2. Now, they will no longer be overlapping. So now, since it's not overlapping, we see that uh, greater or equal than two, since it's past the two. And we just add this to here. So that is our limit. And of course, our y at t is zero because there's no overlap. Now we are going to write all this out. So in our first case, where we had a function is when t squared, and that was when t was from zero to one. In the next case, we had 2t minus 1, and that was when t was from 1 to 2. Our next one, minus t squared plus 4t minus 1, and that was when t was from 2 to 3. And then we had minus 2 plus 8, when t was from 3 to 4. And of course, we had 0 when t was when t was greater than 4. And if you go ahead and you want to plot this, all you do is you plot in 0 to 1. So from 0 to 1, you plot any number for t for this function, and then you plot it. And then from 1 to 2, so you can do 1.1, 1.2, 1.5, all the way to 2. And you use it for this function, and you label the points. So when you go ahead and do it, so let's say, since we have all the way to 4 at 1, so if I plug in a 1 for here, I'm just going to get a 1. At 2... If I plug in a 2 here, I'm going to get 4 minus 1, which is a 3. At 3, if I plug in a 3 here, it'll be a 2 here. And then at 4, I have a 0. And if I go ahead and plot this, it will look something like that. Notice that the graphical method convolution, all it is is the point of convergence. When the two, the impulse response and the input uh, overlap. So as you can see here, where I've shaded in red, that's where you, that's where the integrals, those are the integrations. So we integrate in respect to the shaded area. Of course, when they're not overlapping in cases one and in cases six, um, y of t is just zero. But in all these other cases, all you're doing is just integrating with respect to their limits, and this is what you end up with.